In this video, I will be sharing the top reviews of the book called, American Marxism, written by Mark R. Levin. This book is currently on the New York bestsellers list for the last two weeks. Before I get to the review part let's see what this book is about. In 2009, Mark R. Levin galvanized conservatives with his unforgettable manifesto Liberty and Tyranny, by providing a philosophical, historical, and practical framework for halting the liberal assault on constitution-based values. That book was about standing at the precipice of progressivism's threat to our freedom and now, over a decade later, we're fully over that precipice and paying the price. In American Marxism, Levin explains how the core elements of Marxist ideology are now pervasive in American society and culture, from our schools, the press, and corporations, to Hollywood, the Democratic Party, and the Biden presidency, and how it is often cloaked in deceptive labels like, progressivism, democratic socialism, social activism, and more. With his characteristic trenchant analysis, Levin digs into the psychology and tactics of these movements, the widespread brainwashing of students, the anti-American purposes of critical race theory and the Green New Deal, and the escalation of repression and censorship to silence opposing voices and enforce conformity. Levin exposes many of the institutions, intellectuals, scholars, and activists who are leading this revolution, and provides us with some answers and ideas on how to confront them. As Levin writes, the counter-revolution to the American Revolution is in full force. And it can no longer be dismissed or ignored for it is devouring our society and culture, swirling around our everyday lives, and ubiquitous in our politics, schools, media, and entertainment. And, like before, Levin seeks to rally the American people to defend their liberty. Now let's see some reviews. Seamus Brooks says if ever there were a poster child for the Dunning-Kruger effect, it is Mark R. Levin. Does this man live on another planet? As I read, I would look out my window, look back at the book, and think, what the hell is this guy talking about? Just because Trump lost, the sky is falling? Levin's writing manages to be legalistic, wooden, and alarmist all at the same time. An exhausting chore to read. It's unclear if his overuse of block quotes throughout the book is to compensate for his lack of talent as an author or just sheer laziness. If you'd like a good chuckle, have a look at the book's endnotes and check out the sources Mr. Levin uses to back up this scholarly treatise. Daily Caller, Breitbart, Fox Business, Washington Times, Ad Infinitum. Why not Conservapedia too? No, Levin only cites respectable news organizations here. Linda Galella from New Jersey says Mark shines a light on all the crazy that perpetuates the headlines of today's media, BLM, Antifa, CRT, The Squad, activists, socialists, and every sort of equity you can think of. These have become a collective identity and class consciousness that is the foundation of American Marxism. It's insidious. Levine gives more than most authors. His perspective is well documented and supported as are his suggestions for how to take up the cause to restore democracy to our country and his plan is very specific. Boycott, divestment, sanctions. A plan that has been used on the nation of Israel can be applied to various factions within our own country's business, finance, education and government in order to bring them to heal, to return to sanity. From there, Mark goes on with a detailed plan to rescue education, both lower and higher, major corporations, climate initiatives and a start with law enforcement and the sheer lack of responsibility on the part of the government to take responsibility for charging participants of BLM, Antifa, and other social causes that have killed, destroyed, stolen, burned. Sean from New York says this was an extremely lazy effort from Mark Levin. The majority of this book is quotations. Of course, if you are going to argue against the position of someone you are going to use quotations at times, but Levin depends on them for absolutely everything. If there is a topic he wants to discuss, critical race theory, for example, he'll introduce it and try to explain what it is using quotes, then he'll quote his adversaries, and then he'll use quotes to attack his adversaries. Besides introducing who he's quoting, his own contributions are minimal. Something like, indeed, today we see this strategy playing out in communities all across the country. Or, hence, as we see today, the spawning of numerous movements based on these beliefs. Are oftentimes, for all intents and purposes, what Levin himself has to add to a topic. 
At times he just offer a quote and then simply write, so true. Levin even continually quotes himself throughout the book. Countless times he quotes passages from his previous books. The general tenor of the book is like someone sitting around a campfire trying to scare children with stories about Slender Man. Except for the boogeyman here is Marxism. It's alleged that Marxism is everywhere, insidiously releasing its nefarious poison all throughout American society. Pepe the Rape Skunk was cancelled, soon we'll all be in gulags. Perhaps the most ludicrous assertion is that corporate boardrooms and corporations are havens for Marxism. Imagine, a union-busting plutocrat like Jeff Bezos is really a Marxist. Lee from Texas says let's be clear, this book should be filed under fiction, poorly written fiction at that. It's really difficult to make it through this regurgitation of Fox News. Useful to know what the people who are actively trying to destroy our country think though. Oak Pollard from the United Kingdom says predictably vacuous and the worst of mass appeal ideological polemics. Threats to the nation and family, invocation of tradition and an omnipresent enemy undermining our society. The formula is simple and rarely fails, no matter how lazily done or how old the tactic. The book's argument is theoretically sloppy and proceeds in the most basic form, both analytically and linguistically. Luckily for Levin, Books like this do not need to deal in facts or meaningfully engage with the supposed object of critique. I have read many reviews of this book and I can say that there are positive and negative ways to see this. But in my experience whenever there is a book written on political matters that is complete propaganda. It depends on people's personal views that if it is good propaganda or bad one. My suggestion is that if you are not into politics then skip this book. Thanks for watching.